the greatest American alive. Hi, I'm David Wessel. I'm director of the Hutchins Center on Fiscal and Monetary Policy here at Brookings. And I'm joined today by Jason Furman, who's chair of President Obama's Council of Economic Advisors. Hi, my name is Project Daddy, and I'm going to be jumping in on this conversation with these two wonderful gentlemen. They're about to have the most important conversation of our lifetime. Ten million American men are out of work, and instead of talking about these wonderful individuals like the greatest American alive, like you, the greatest American alive, nope, they talk about them like a real small number, as if they're insignificant. And so I think it's very important for Project Daddy to come in and hold these wonderful gentlemen accountable. So let's listen in. The fraction of men between the age of 25 and 54, prime age men, men who are mostly too old to be in school and mostly too young to be retired by our conventional standards, are not working or looking for work. Ooh, 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 I know. Right? Project Daddy knows. Project Daddy knows the answer from 25 to 54 does not at work. Oh, my goodness. Give me like three guesses. Give me three guesses. I guarantee you I know what it is. Those gentlemen, they don't know what it is. They don't know the greatest American lie, but I do. I'll tell you what. I got, I got a clue. I got a clue. It starts with a C, and it, the next word starts with an S. Child support, child support, 25 to 54, child support. Let's go. The fraction of prime age men who are working or looking for work <laughs> has fallen continuously since the 1950s. In the early 1950s, 98% of men in that age bracket had a job, most of them had a job, or the ones that didn't were actively looking for one. You can see his big brain. That man with the big brain, he has no idea why these amazing American men are not going to work. He can't even guess it. You can see his big brain just computing and trying to figure out, why won't they go to work? I don't get it. Give Project Daddy, I promise you, Project Daddy has a second guess. Let me guess. What is it? It starts with an S, ends with a child support, child support. He don't know. He don't know. Brain too big. He can't figure it out. Today, that fraction has fallen down to 88%, and that process pretty much took place over about a half century. So if you look at all the men between this, these eight in this prime age group, 12% of them aren't even looking for work. These gentlemen don't have a clue, so please let's bring in another special guest. Daniel Hatcher, could you uh, please come here and introduce to them why these men are not going back to work? Uh, thank you. Um, and if you have a father that's coming out of prison and he's trying to get back on his feet and, and, and live above board, you know, in, in the regular economy, but then he has twenty, thirty thousand dollars in child support debt owed to the government. His license is suspended because of the child support, right? Again, owed to, owed to the government, much of it, right? And then if he does land a job, if he's lucky enough to find employment despite the criminal record, I mean, those are difficulties in itself. As soon as he starts to work, 65% of his wages will be garnished. Daniel Hatcher, you make that way too clear. And so let's go back to these two motherfuckers who have no idea. And I don't mean to call them motherfuckers, but for some reason with their big ass brains and big ass degrees, they can't fathom. They have no idea what's going on in working class and poor men's lives. They're so disconnected from the reality of 10 million people, the greatest American alive. And that right there, it makes Project Daddy angry. Come on back here, you motherfuckers. You hear me? That's right. Wow. They have you know, given up looking for work. And for most of them, when we look at them, they didn't look for, they didn't have a job the year before and weren't looking for work the year before either. This isn't just a, you know, I'll take a month off from searching for a job. This seems to be, you know, from the bulk of these men, a real long run state for them. Ooh, it's for me, it's the smile on his face. That smile on his face. He's just sitting there just looking like a motherfucking turd. Listen here, buddy. Uh, kids don't turn 18 overnight, right? These guys are out there busting their ass, and for some reason you think that he's supposed to contribute to a household that he's not a part of, and you can do the math. These summer guns, they got all the data. They got all the numbers. They don't crunch them all the way down to the motherfucking smallest percentile. They know what's happening to these guys by the books, but they don't give a fuck about that the government has these men by the balls. They don't give a shit. Work, nigga, work. But you can't eat and you can't have a place to sleep. Come here back, you sons of bitches, and keep on talking this nonsense. Okay, so when you look at the men, what, so 12%, that's something like one in nine men, aren't working or looking for work. What do we know about these guys? What do we know about these guys? What do we know about these guys? This mo the, the computer's computing. Bitch, pull out your calculator. I know you got one in your back pocket, and they got a TI-89 right there in his back pocket. Pull it out, point Dexter. 
one in nine one in nine what what's going on with these guys one in nine men in america that's about how many goddamn bums huh we know that they're disproportionately um, without a high school education they're disproportionately poor we know a little bit about how they spend their time they're not spending any more time you know on child care they're not spending any more time on chores they are spending a lot more time watching television they're poor they're not doing chores they're not watching their kids and they're watching tv they're poor they're not doing their chores and they're watching tv now, who the fuck do you think you're talking to do you think you're sitting there talking to some adolescent child Listen here, man, you paid a whole bunch of money to make sure that my children not only go to school, but when they're not in school, they're going to daycare. But I don't get to control these fundings. You control these monies, and you send them to their mama, okay? And then when I'm sitting over here talking about, can I see my babies? Say, no, you didn't pay your child support. I didn't pay my child support, but the state paid for them to go to daycare. And so I'm sitting there like, I miss my kids. I can't go to work because I ain't got no motherfucking job. And so, like, uh, somebody give me the lotion. Where's the lotion? Or where's the goddamn remote? Man, the arrogance behind you. I know that, you know, people should be doing something productive, but what can you do productive when you can't even go and get a fucking job? You can't go out and do nothing because you ain't got no money in your pocket. But we can't have these conversations because you, you are stuck on the data. And you're not concerning yourself with the actual person. You don't give a fuck about the greatest American alive. Not at all. The greatest American alive. It's just lucky enough to have women who make lots of money so they don't have to work. Right. There have generally been two classes of explanations for why this has happened. One class I'd call the supply side, and that is these men don't want to work. And there's a bunch of reasons they may not want to work. One is they could be married to a woman that is working. And with so many more women working today than 50 years ago, you'd think that might be the case. It turns out this group of men isn't married to the working women. So a lot of them aren't married right, at all, right? A lot of them aren't married at all. Only about one in five are married to a working woman, and that is less, a lower fraction of this type of um, you know, men who aren't mm -hmm. working than was the case before. So this is not men who are living on their spouse's income. I promise, if I was watching TV, somebody give me a remote, I'd throw a remote at that motherfucker, hit his ass straight in the head, boop! <laughs> This son of a gun, did you pay attention to that? Did you hear him? He gave a hypothetical, and then after he gave a hypothetical, he said, you know, they could be living off of their wives, but these guys, they're not living off their wives. These some bitches out there are slanging some major dick. Wife goes to work. Hi, honey, I'm home. It's the opposite of Al Bundy. It's a brand new modern family, but hell no, that's not what's going on, is it? They understood that, but I think they're trying to poke fun at you, the greatest American alive, and I don't understand what their agenda is, but let's keep on listening to these square fuckers, yes? Are they on Social Security disability? Right, so that's another supply-side explanation, is there are more people on disability insurance today than before, but the increase in disability insurance has been much smaller than the increase in the number of men not working. Since the 1960s, about 2% more men are getting disability insurance, but the participation rate has fallen by 7.5 percentage points. So right off the bat, you can't explain the majority of the decline. We need to do a quick recap. He said ages 25 to 54, these gentlemen, they're not married, they're not collecting Social Security, they're not collecting unemployment, uh, they're not collecting any food stamps, and so with no government assistance, somehow this guy did all the math, and these dudes are sitting on the couch watching television. And that's fascinating, okay? And on top of that, they don't want a job. Somehow, they don't want a job. They don't want to feed themselves. They don't want to clothe themselves. All right. Then when you look harder, it turns out that a lot of the disability insurance probably is caused by the men not working, didn't cause it. And then outside of disability insurance, the government is much less generous today than before. You, it's harder to get welfare unemployment form. insurance. It's harder to get welfare if you're an able-bodied man, it's harder to get um, food stamps. So everything else has actually gone down and become less generous. He has absolutely no idea. There's, he has no clue. And as he sits there, he's like, well, there's no government assistance. There's no Social Security. There's no family. There's no unemployment. He can't go to any office to get any assistance. And we can't figure out how these guys are surviving. And they're really not surviving. They're just figuring out how to stay alive. And that's why the suicide rate amongst men is skyrocketing through the roof. But they won't even talk about those people who left the job market. They just went ahead and went, 
fly by because it's really, really hard for these individuals to try to figure it out, especially when there's no assistance. And as these guys sit there with these smug smiles on their faces, like, I don't know, these guys just don't want to work and they don't want any assistance. But there is no policy that affects these wonderful individuals. I mean, we live in legislation nation. We pass laws for everybody. You get some money. You get some money. If we have 100,000 immigrants come to our borders, we're like, hey, guys, we got money for you, too. But as we walk down our streets and we see amazing American citizens laying there in their own filth, we don't have no answers. And we'll just sit there and think, uh, they're poor and they're homeless because they don't want to work. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. That's rational. Right, so one possibility is that these men just don't want to work. They've decided not to work. Uh, <clears throat> another possibility is that they actually would like to work, but they can't find a job or the wages aren't high enough to get them off the couch. To be a nigga in the room. To be a nigga in the room. The way they express these things. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch twice because there's two of them. Son of a bitch, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch because there's two of them. Right, and that's what I would call a demand side explanation. The amount that employers want to hire them for some reason has gone down. The greatest American alive. Let me explain both of those. The first is Fewer people want to hire people with less education, without a high school degree. If that's the case, you would predict two things would happen. One, you'd predict they'd have lower wages. And the second is you'd predict fewer of them would be hired. And that's exactly what we've seen. Son of a bitch! So I think the same reduction in the demand for skilled labor which has come because of the nature of technological... Reduction in demand for unskilled labor. For unskilled labor, right. Which has come because the nature of technological change is to increasingly reward people with skills. I think that's manifested itself both in greater inequality, but also in this perhaps even worse thing of men not working. The greatest American alive. Okay, so when we look at the economy as a whole and the unemployment rate's down, so somebody's getting jobs, uh, the... Employers are hiring a couple hundred thousand jobs last month added. Why should we worry about this decline in the fraction of prime age men who have jobs? I think we should worry about it. First of all, understand it's quite large. The difference between a recession and a normal economic period is maybe two percentage points on the employment population ratio. When it goes up by two percentage points, so like, we think we're coming I mean, down. That's a couple million people, right? Right. Right. So this is something that's more like 10 percentage points stretched over a longer period of time. But you're talking about something that in some sense is bigger than the difference between a recession and a boom. And the impact it has, the evidence is it's very clear that you know, for some of these people, it's a choice. Not everyone needs to work. Not everyone should work. But when you're talking about someone who's not married, who has less than a high school degree, you know, there's a good chance it's not a choice. And it's associated with, you know, um, with depression, with drug use, with suicide, with a range of bad outcomes for people. So, uh, yeah, it must be a pool of about the neighborhood of 10 million, close to 10 million men we're talking about, men who are over age 25, under age 24, uh, 54, but are not even bothering. Um, it's, uh, yeah. To be a nigga in the room. To be a nigga in the room. The way they express these things Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch twice because there's two of them. Son of a bitch, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. So basically, the men aren't looking for work, but your hypothesis is that they're not looking for work because they pretty much know that no one wants to hire them, or if they got a job, it wouldn't be enough money to justify the cost of working or whatever else. They'd be exactly. And then there's also can be something... Um, that is self-fulfilling of, of that, which is that if you're not in a job for a while, you become less skilled at searching for a job and less attractive to employers and may get stuck in that state. Exactly. Exactly. I would let him finish, but he has to surrender his time. Project Daddy said, that's enough of that nonsense. Enough of the fuckery and the tomfoolery. Enough of the nonsense. Enough of the bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. He goes on to give, like, his solutions. But his solution was, like, education, education. What? I'm out, man. I'm out because you, can, you, know, you don't got the solution. And the reason why you don't have the solution is because you don't care. These gentlemen don't exist to you. And even though it's 10 million men, you'll just say, 
Let those go. Let those guys go out there and just be on their own. And I've seen something nasty. Let me tell you a little story about when you're in prison, okay? When you watch a man, if he doesn't get no mail, if he don't get no phone calls, and he ain't got no friends, uh, he turns feral. Yes, if you've never seen a man go wild, oh, my God, it's one of the nastiest things in the motherfucking world, okay? There are wild hogs that are ravaging the American uh, countryside right now. They're tearing up farms everywhere. And I don't want to compare the human person to these hogs, but damn, when these hogs get wild, they just start tearing up shit. I don't want you to think about this, you know. Just take it in consideration. There are 10 million able-bodied men from the ages of 25 to 54 just out there waiting on an opportunity, waiting on an opportunity. And as that opportunity don't come, they're getting angrier and angrier and more and more bitter. And so while you sit there and you do your math on your fingers and try to quantify why these, why these guys are not in the workplace, I'll tell you what. You keep on guessing, and then when you got one of those nasty fucking things happens, that happens in the Middle East when they ain't got no jobs, or happens in a third world country when they ain't got no jobs, this might sound very derogatory. Get earmuffs, when you ain't got no money, you ain't got no pussy, because if you ain't got no money, you can't get no pussy, then the American citizen, the greatest American alive, will get very irritated. And I don't think you want that type of problems on your hands. Uh, fight for yourself. Fight for the greatest American alive. When you see these wonderful people out there, ask yourself, it could be you. You're one motherfucking divorce away. You're one child support payment away from being out here homeless on these streets. The greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.